So of course this is a really open question and uh, let me tell you that there's no perfect solution, that's the short answer. But I think there's a few things that we should talk about because more than showing you solutions, I think it's best to show you what you should look out for because the solution is the combination and the balance between three main areas that I want to call your attention to. So the three main areas I'm talking about are the mat, the spill and additive. As an extra, we can also take in consideration the edge extent. So as I said, my intention here today is not so much showing you the perfect key, but rather show you what you should look up for when doing this process yourselves. It all starts with the mat, of course, and there's a few things that I would like to call your attention to. So in here, I have these two versions of the plate. I have one denoise and I have one with normal noise. And then I have this background in here. The fact that we have tracking markers in here, I'm just ignoring this fact. Because what we're going to look at is more about these edges, which was actually the question. Let's start with the key light. And this is the first thing that I would like to call your attention to. And I want to believe that this is not news for anybody who's watching this, but you should always do the matte extraction coming from a denoise plate rather than a noise plate. Here's what I have, but look what happens if you ignore this fact and put this on the noise plate. You see, there's good and bad with it. The first thing that it's good is you have a lot of detail in here that you cannot have in here. So this is one of the first things to watch out for. Yes, it's best to do the matte extraction coming from the denoise plate, but in some areas you might want to use the noise plate without having any side effects like flickering to get all this detail. So in here, if I don't have any flickering, I would probably take advantage of some things in this side that I want to have as my mat. Of course, there's a lot of pollution in the background. So if I want to go on this route, I would probably have another one in here and I would have to clean it slightly either within the whatever gear you're using or with a color lookup which is probably what I would do. If you compare now these two solutions you see that one of them will have more detail than the other. This obviously it's highly dependent on what was the method that you use or what was the tool that you used to do the denoise. But anyway if you have differences like this it's something to watch out for and you can use a key mix to mix these two worlds just on on the portions in which you want to take this more in consideration say for example this one here so now we have this thing with more detail but I want to call your attention for something which is it's different if you do a normal key line directly from the plate as we are doing in here or if you do it via a log version of the plate whether it's the true log or an approximation log at the moment i'm just going to put this log to lean of course now this gear is not valid because you know the color that i was picking is no longer valid within the log version of my plate so i will have to pick this one again and what i'm trying to get at is the fact that this will also give you different result than this you see that it's not the same so you probably have a better fall off with the log version and that's why these are the reasons why you should have a mat for the core and other mats whether it's one or more than one for different parts of your edges you want the fall off to be just right but you don't want to introduce any holes in your mat which is the case in this version there's a lot of holes in here that you don't want for sure so again it's a matter of balancing different worlds to come up with the best of both of them so i'm assuming that in this case I have the perfect core mat which is probably not the case but even if it's not the case I'm not gonna retweak this because you know, I'm assuming that you know how to do this kind of things it's very easy so let's move on to the next part which is the dispel so now that I have my mat I now want to dispel my plate and this is also something that is going to influence your edges quite a lot quite severely and I see a lot of people failing at this stage and where should you do the dispel where you should do the dispel on the denoise version of your plate because if you do it on the noise version of the plate you're possibly going to get artifacts I'm going to show you what I mean by this so uh, I'm going to use my dispel can use any of the spill you want but look what happens if I do this on the noise version of the plate let's say that I don't want the to luminance for example so you see that all these artifacts in here will be introduced so you see that this version has a lot of grain for example which is not the same as my actual plate so you are introducing artifacts that you don't want to so it's always safer to do the dispel always on the denoise version and then we're going to get the original noise back on top in all the different stage so this is another thing you want to watch out for for edges because if you do the dispel on the noise version you're going to get artifacts possibly in the edges as well so now that i have 
have my dispute version of my plate. Now I want to copy my mat to my dispute version of my plate. And then I want to use the pre mold in here. Well, in here everything seems kind of alright, but we don't know for sure until we start mixing this with the background. So let's see what happens. I can see I still have possibly a little bit of green and other problems in here. So the first thing to do is to come up with a method on the dispute version of your plate that not only will take the green away, but also will make the edge color closer or exactly the same as the edge color of your foreground. So whatever color you're putting on the background has to match the actual edge. Otherwise, you're going to get this transition that depending on the background might not be what you want. In this case in here, I can see that there's a fringe in here of green and other colors that are not desirable. For example, in here, I have this gray, see, coming from this background. We already covered this, so I don't want to repeat myself, but this tool of mine have the ability of actually getting the background color with the same color as where the edge belongs. So here's the difference. If you don't have this being done in this way, looking at the final result, you're going to get these differences. You see this in here, for example, and in here in this fringe as well, and all around, really. So this is another thing you want to watch out for, which is how is your spill being done? Do you have the right color close to your edge or you have a color that doesn't belong at all with your edge. Whether you have it or you don't have it, let's not forget that this version of the plate is going to be cut with the alpha that you have. So if you don't have the enough detail in here, you're not going to get anything being shown anyway. So that's why it's important that you get all the detail possible at this stage as well. It's better to have it and then you know make a decision whether or not you're going to use them all or you're going to use other processes to compensate for whatever problems you might have. But it's a very good starting point that you have all the detail possible. So in here, let's see the difference. If we don't mix these two, you see why this is important in here? So if you wouldn't mix this, you're not going to get this detail. So it's very important that you have all the detail possible on the mat side. And then, as I said, make a decision whether or not you're going to use them. Okay, so we just covered these two important aspects, mat and the spill. And hopefully you now understand how this can mean so much for your edges. So another thing you want to watch out for is how hard is your mat? Although, yes, you can get a lot of detail. In this case, the mat is really hard in some areas in here which is this case. So different methods of king gives you different results. And the reason is this transition here on your mat, as you can see now, it's really abrupt. The actual core part of the keyer is too strong and too abrupt in terms of value to that transition to the fall off. So we have to watch out for these situations as well. So let's go to the different pillar of what makes good edges and let's not talk about the additive. So we're not going to get into so much how to do additive king. We already discussed different methods anyway regarding Additive King. I'm gonna use mine called Detail Catcher and now I have all this detail, nice fall off, you know, right colors, everything in here. Let me call your attention for something. At the moment I'm using my plate with the noise in it to do this version of my Additive and what I'm gonna get is probably double grain because I'm gonna put another image on top of this one and this one has already some grain in it and that's why you should never do this in this way. What you should do is with the denoise version again. So now I don't have any noise. And now I have all all this nice detail that otherwise I wouldn't get it the same way. I have all this nice detail in here. But look what this is also giving me. This will enhance the problem that I have in here anyway. This is making this problem even more apparent. So again, if you have all really well balanced on this side, when you go to this side of things, everything should fall just perfectly. But the thing is, we knew from the beginning that we had the problem in here and we could see it even before we had the additive that the problem was here. So if you don't take care of these things at the right time, when you are introducing other things, this will be even more apparent. Yes, you're going to get more detail and better detail in here. Everything is really nice in here, but this will actually enhance the fact that you have bad edges rather than solving the problem. Let's assume that for the sake of argument that you did everything that you possibly could and you still have this problem. Let me tell you that that's not true. You can always do things at the mat level and if you do things at the mat level, this will be just fine. But that's when the edge extent can help you. But there's very important things to take into consideration on this front. I strongly believe that if you have a good balance on all these three things, this will not be needed. But we know that in the reality of productions, this will actually happen at some point. 
but you have to be very careful on how you do this and when you do this type of edge extent. So first of all, at the moment, we still are with the denoise plate. So that means that we don't have the original grain. So I'm gonna put the original grain back on top. So now here, this will be the original grain. Another thing to take in consideration when you're dealing with this, which will also influence your edges, is whether or not you have a really visible fringing with some grain in it. I don't think that in this case, this will show it, but Take in consideration that sometimes this method, although it's the original grain, the fact that you have an, a fringe like this, this can introduce some edge problems. So very simply, what you can do is you can select just the edge of your character and just drop another dispel like this. And then with the key mix, you just say, I want this dispel just where this thing is. So now you're gonna get that being affected just on the edge. The rest remains intact. And this will be enough for you to not have that problem anymore on the edge, if that's the case, which in this case, I don't think he was showing, but anyway, this will also influence your edges. But as I was saying, edge extent destroys your grain because it's based on blurs for the great majority of the time, or even if it's not blurs, it's distortion or something like that, which will destroy the integrity of your pixels, which will result in some blurriness. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna use mine. I can use whatever edge extent you want. You see that my pixels are getting a little bit blurred. So so if you definitely need to do this, you have to do this in a very wise way. By wise, I mean to start with, don't do this with the noise. We know that we have the noise available somewhere else. And then let's say that this is okay. So I'm just gonna put this as a final result. And then I'm gonna unpremolt this again. So I have the maximum range in terms of canvas to play with. And then I'm gonna put my noise back on top. Now I want to copy my alpha coming from my key. And then I want to premolt this again. Okay, so this way I'm making sure that I'm not applying anything on the pre version. I'm introducing the original grain, but before that's when I should do my edge extent, not after because it's gonna destroy my grain again. So all of these things will influence on not only the detail that you're gonna get, but also the quality of your edges. Now I can play with this in a safe way. So here's what I need to do. First of all, this tool of mine is based on a exponential growth of your pixels. So this will actually give you very good results as if it was very organically coming from the actual edge see that I have all of those variations in color so let's see what would work if you don't have this yes it's much better okay but you should only apply this where it's strictly necessary you have to be very surgical in terms of where you are applying this because if you apply this over everything you're gonna get artifacts that you don't want to and I call your attention for for example what's happening in here you see that this is now altering the aspect of your actual plate so this it's not the same as this so you have to be very careful on where you apply this so at the moment i just want to apply this in this area so i'm just going to drop a rotor shape and i'm just going to put the rotor shape where i need it then with the key mix i'm just going to say that i want this pixel stretch just on that region there okay let me rearrange this a little bit better so now if we go on and off you see that you have that problem being taken care of just where it's a problem and not anywhere where it's not a problem so now what you do as a final check is you're gonna get a wipe to see what else you need to do but as you know it's a combination of all of these things at the moment it seems like we have a nice level of detail done very quickly so things could be definitely better but it's not bad as a starting point i still think that this area here would require a little bit more help on the mat side of things for example and this area here it's also a little bit too hard still but it's basically how you do it in terms of balancing all of these aspects Again, it's not my intention to show you the perfect key, although this is not bad as a starting point, but it's more about telling you how to balance all these things out because this shouldn't be a complicated process at all. This should be actually very simple with very simple processes, but this is more about the balance on all these three factors in here. This for me is extra, as we just mentioned, but these three factors are the most important ones to get things right. Some people might say that actually having more math is going to cause you more problems than to have less. I don't share that view. I think all of these things are important and math with all the detail that's possible to get, it's a good thing to have, not a bad thing to have because it's best to have more and then 
throw it away if you don't want to have it rather than not have it as a starting point. The dispel is also hugely important. You should tackle the spill in the same way that you tackle math in terms of what's the core part and what's the edge part. And then the additive, you know, there's many different processes. Mine is very simple, as I just mentioned many, many times, but it's something that you should follow any method or the method that you feel more comfortable with. So let's not forget also that at the end, you know, a tiny bit of um, massaging in the pixels at the very, very end can be done. Not my preference, but can be done if it's like just a tiny bit, especially if you have like a very, very good additive king. What I mean by this is you can always go with, for example, an erode. What an erode? Yeah, sometimes very, very gently. Even one pixel might be too much, something like half a pixel. Maybe this will massage things in a in a good way for example in here okay and maybe this is already a little bit too much but you have to make these decisions in an informed way and you have to make sure that at least you have the detail on this part in here but the detail on the matte side of things is also very important because probably you will have to at some point render this as a matte for the eye or you're going to need this as a completely separate render so you can provide it for 3D conversion processes, for example. So the mat on that side of things is also very important. And it's important all around. It's better to have more at the starting point and then throw away the bits that we don't want rather than the opposite. Because if you don't have it, you're not going to have it at the end by some sort of magic trick. So this is my take on your question, Salvan. Uh, I hope I answered this question. I tried to make it as less boring as possible. This is a topic that there's a ton of things out there and that's why I think it's a little bit boring. But anyway, since we are opening this segment, I just wanted to give you my take on it. Hope you liked it. See you next time.